Chris kept so much stuff. You could tell he loved the show too. Oh, here's Jilly. And there's yep. Danny. Oh, look, Danny looks unhappy. How rare. Nah. <laughs> Yeah, you know, Danny knows uh, I love him, so I can say that it's okay. I mean, it, it, the behind scenes photos. I mean, I ain't seeing anywhere you're not. No, everybody's smiling. Well, not everybody. Well, not Danny. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I love that woman. Oh, talented, crazy good, talented. You know, I mean. <sighs> Yeah, so I guess we're in the spaceship there. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. She, oh, yeah. She's gonna go into the what we call the Seven Up bottles, right? Yeah. Yep. The Seven Up. Seven Up bottles. <laughs> yep, that's pretty good. You know, I mean, yeah, the stuff from that he donated to us is like this stuff. This right here, you can see. I mean, this is probably gonna be a little. This is like. You see good? Oh yeah, that's a great set. It's like you see all the lighting and stuff. It's like the caves and stuff. Wow. It's amazing. How come he didn't give any of this stuff to me? <laughs> I don't know. Well, that's a good question. You know, hey, I'm you know he you got his phone number. Give him a ring. <laughs> oh wow. Wow. Yeah. What an honor that was to have. Oh my god. I mean, Bill, Bill Davis is larger than life. And then you had those two guys. Look, There's another one. Uh, you know, I had the chance to work with Armin Munerstahl. Um, you know, dreams come true. Yeah, you know, I, the behind the scenes photos are absolutely, you know, they're, they're, they're here's uh, during uh, the, the explosion. Oh, that's that's down at the Unical building. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that. What was it like, you know, working with um I I, I think he's a great actor, you know, Terry O'Quinn. Can you see? I mean, if I do this, is that better? Yeah. Um um Terry O'Quinn has one singular uh objective. His aim is very precise. And right. it is what is the finest version of each scene? Because that's where he's going. And you got to get on board. Right. And you can feel him if he gets out ahead of you. You can feel the tug. He wants to know that you are with him to figure out what is the finest version of this scene. And it, there's no scene, he doesn't take any scenes off. Um, he's not, all right, so what do you think this is about? No, no, he is a far more sharpened edge, um, which is great because, you know, and that was the, there was a big movie with a lot of moving parts that you have to pay attention to, some of them practical, um, you know, stay away from the rotors, the helicopter blades, you know, whatever. <sighs> and schedule and time of day and all that kind of stuff. But Terry um, didn't say it. He didn't say I demand, you know, but you could feel that when you got around Terry or Terry was at a scene that we were gonna aim and you gotta be with him. We were gonna go for the finest version of each scene. And it was okay if we missed because missed was gonna be a, a, an efforted mistake right or an efforted miss there would be no lack of effort tolerated um from terry so i mean i got along well with him but i could feel the suction when he got around me right we better be on on board here together about what this moment is and what we're doing to get it right so you know and his longevity and his repeated career success no surprise no surprise my for my first introduction to terry o'quinn was this is going way 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 back he scared the hell out of me he was in that movie the stepfather <laughs> yeah do, do you, are you familiar with that that was a long time ago but yeah yeah that you know but he's played so much you know he's such a great actor you know yes here's another thing we'd like to show you like i said maybe you'll know maybe you won't 
this is other stuff that Chris had donated. All right, it's little things of film, okay? I don't believe it's a trailer, okay? Let's see if I can get... The poor man's got to try to read those little numbers. Yeah. Yeah. And it says, well, we all know the fake Blackwood. name, Blackwood. Yeah. I, don't, I have no I idea what that's, what's on that. You know? This one, too. Yeah, it's the same thing. All right. One of them, I so badly want to know, but I don't want to open them. Right. And I mean, we have, uh, you know, other thing that he donated to us was it's 1013 film reels contains various undeveloped film reels from, you know, from Blackwood, you know. And I, can, I, can, I can tell you what's on all those reels. Really? It's all, it's all, it's all behind the scenes footage of, of Chris running onto the set telling me what a great job I was doing. And he would just go on profusely for, for 10, 20, 30 minutes in hyper detail about what a great job I was doing. That's what's in those reels. Well, great. Then when we open the museum, we know exactly what to put on. You yeah, know. I, would just, I, would never, I would never watch them. I would preserve them like a money spoon. Exactly. Uh, but I can promise you that's what it is. It's, it's Chris and even Danny. Uh, Telling you uh, how awesome you are. What a great job I was doing and how yeah. happy Danny was. That way we can label them correctly, you know. <laughs> Love all the phrase reels. Yeah, that's that's yeah, that's a good that's a good you know. That's what I'll put on the little cards, absolutely. Yeah, you know, big, I mean we've got a box full, you yeah, know, of lot. these things. You know, I mean it's just got numbers and it's just Those got numbers have to mean something, but yeah beats the hell out of me you know i had no idea well 400 is the asa so that's that's the speed of the film right you know i mean there's just there's so much he donated so much one thing i can tell you about chris carter which you probably know i don't have to tell you anything you know the guy is so organized you know and yeah. he kept detailed the records of yeah. everything he kept and how it was stored and it's amazing. It is absolutely amazing, you know. Here's something I'm gonna bring out, you know. Oh, good lord. Oh, I love this guy. I this know. guy's great. Yeah, I know. You know? He, Just don't invite him to dinner. He, this guy. You might have to stand up, I think. You're gonna have to stand up. There we go, you know? <laughs> uh you keep that right inside the front door when your guests walk in that's what they see on the, on the living room sofa so that way you know, yeah yeah we don't really like company so that way yeah well my daughter you know when i first got it and she got off the school bus she walked in and screamed <laughs> you know uh we have you know so much from you know the movie you know i mean it's yeah. it's great stuff and the fans they eat it up. They love it, you know, seeing all the stuff, you know. It's history. You guys made history. Yep. We get well, to preserve thank you. it. Thank you. But I gotta tell you, not from Fight the Future. This is one that Chris donated that I it's it's one of my favorite pieces. Remember the episode remember the remember the episode, Piper Maru? Oh yes. All right. Um that's his favorite one. He, he he wants to do it all over again. It was so much fun. Um, you know, you had your uh, your oh, divers. I would. I would make that again. You yeah. know, you had your divers going into the water. You know, yeah. and uh, that was that was it, was. it was just. I'm just gonna get it, Joe. Yeah, good idea. You know, just just get it. Do you need any help getting no. that? Because I don't want you to hurt our our little creepy dude. No, I got it. This one right here. You're probably gonna have to go behind it. I'm gonna. It's big. You're gonna have to move. Yeah. What in the heck? Oh wow! Wow, what a great piece! Amazing wow. piece. Did Chris give you that? Yeah, Chris donated that to us. Wow, that's fantastic. You know, and what a and treasure. It's it definitely. Oh, absolutely. You know, um, when he messaged us and. He sent us photos, you know, of it. I, I, I almost started crying. I was just gonna you say. know, <laughs> you know, it's just that and, was quite an episode. Yeah, 
Fantastic. So do you have any stories from that episode you can share with us? Um, yeah, um, I'll, I rem I'll begin with an easy one to remember because Christy yelled at me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we were shooting the end of the episode and that is when, um, so the, the black oil is now trans transferred into the guy's wife yep. and she's at the, I think it was an airport. Um, and Mulder is there with Crycheck and Crycheck has to use the restroom. Um, and I had to tell the story very simply that there's a men's men's room and a ladies room. And, um, this was this, I think this was a, it might've been a cruise terminal or it was a big, uh, it was a big terminal for, I think the cruise lines up uh, near the water in Vancouver. And so I needed this little hallway that had a ladies room and a men's room, like in one frame, right? Right. right. That's a set you would build to make sure you have it. So, but we didn't build a set. So I'm walking around this massive place looking for this thing and I hadn't found it yet. And I think we had rehearsed it with David and David knew that. And then David called Chris and I think David had said, I don't understand how this is going to work or whatever, but I, I knew what I needed to find and I was going to get it right. I just hadn't got it right yet. And so Chris calls me up and I, I've told this story before, but I don't, I'm not going to remember or repeat what he said, uh, but he was pretty hot and um, basically said, this has got to be just right. This has got to be really good. And I'm like, Hey, I'm, I'm all about really good. You know, yeah. was like yelling at me to do the thing I was already going to do. But you know, he was concerned because he wasn't there. And you know, if he was there, we would have said like, Hey, Chris, let's take a walk. Let's go find this thing. We'll figure it out. Right. And I, I did find it. And, uh, uh, but I, it was always ironic to me because all I cared about was quality. That's all I cared about the highest quality possible. And he calls at me and says, this has to, you know, basically this has to be really high quality. I was like, dude, who are you talking to? Yeah. <laughs> like, but it's okay. He wasn't there. I understood. David got him worried. That's all cool. So then, um, I thought what it was a really, really cinematic, impactful way to tell the story that the wife had transferred the black oil into Crycheck. And I don't remember what it was in the script, but I felt that it was soft and mushy and, and wasn't going to be clear to the audience that something really freaky happened um, to our friend. Um, and so I had called, I think I called Chris and said, I, I know how I'm going to do this in the same shot where Crychuk comes out of the bathroom and um, Mulder asked him, you know, how he was feeling or, you know, did you have a good pee or what? I don't remember what he said, but uh, Crychuk is suddenly like disconnected psychologically from any relationship with Mulder, like something unplugged. And he just kind of blows past Mulder and, um, um, says something to the effect of, you know, how was it? And he says, fine, never felt better, whatever he says. And then I was going to have, I was going to have Nick just come right into the camera as though the camera was in, in his direct path as he's walking. And, and we would go out on his face coming right in the lens where the audience could see the oil. And um, I believe the mechanism was that Chris had then called Frank and bounced it off of Frank and then Chris called me back and said, Frank thinks this is not going to work. And I knew it was going to work. And I just said, well, I don't remember what I said. I didn't say take a hike to Chris, yeah. <laughs> um, but I just did it anyway um, because I was there and I knew it was going to work. And so I did it. And then that's the ending of Piper Maru. By the way, Chris or Frank never called me to applaud that I stuck to my guns or anything. They just didn't say anything. <laughs> they're, they're not gonna call and go, we were wrong you were right way to go no but but you know that's the ending um uh the other one was um 
the newt suit, which is this, which is the single atmosphere diving suit. So the the newt suit, uh, up to a certain depth, the diver inside is still at surface uh, air pressure. That's what that thing is. So what does that mean? That means the diver can go down to 500 feet, ret retrieve the bell from the uh, Fitzgerald in the, whichever Great Lake it went down, and he's always at surface light. He can stay down there for five hours, whereas a normal diver is going through. Um, uh, pressure, the very limited time they can stay down there. Um, so a fantastic creation. And it was created across the street from the studio. Just happened to be. That's crazy. Uh, so, you know, they found this out and Chris, they all figured out a way to integrate it. And, uh, but there were, and we had some tank work and Drop Dead Fred was in the tank. It was in the tank across the street in their test tank uh, oh. where we put the plane. Um, but I had to, I had to do some of the, you know, the boat work, obviously I had to be outside, you know, on the real water. And there's a, in that area, there's a huge thermocline where you've got the cold water coming from the mountain and then the ocean water. And when they mix, it looks like oil in the water and it's just hot and cold water mixing. It's called thermocline. Huh. Um, and, um, and it also affects visibility in the water. Nothing you can do about it. So the stuff of in the water of the of the newt suit descending. Well, we wanted to see him descend, you know, way down there, uh, but the, the water was murky because of the thermocline. Because we're in Canada, we're near a mountain where you know snow turns to rain and rain turns to river water, and river goes into the ocean up there. And so that's what you had. So Chris Chris was hoping that we could see the guy go further, but um, I didn't pick a bad day to shoot it. That's just the way the water looks. Uh, but you know, we had, we had a, um, one of the top underwater photographers, cameramen flown in, I believe from Florida and, um, um, and obviously a lot of moving parts that day. Um, and you're putting, we're also putting a guest actor in the newt suit. And if you have one drop of claustrophobia, you can't get in that suit. No, no. Oh my God. Yeah. Um, so you know, managing that actor in the scenes where we can see his face, um, checking on him a lot, um, you know, where the, the production doesn't matter. I got to make sure, are you okay being in there? And he, you could see that he was working on staying composed, which he did, bravo. Um, the water was also, I don't know, 49, 50 degrees, really cold. Right. So that means that the divers are all in dry suits, not wet suits, they're in dry suits which means there is no water inside the suit. Because if there is, your, your time underwater gets very, very short because you get hypothermia. Well, um, with all those moving parts, uh, the very expensive camera operator um, from Florida got a hole in his dry suit. Uh-oh. Wow. Which, which means he can't go in the water. Right. And, I've got the ship, I've got the newt suit, I've got the guys who made the newt suit. Um, I've got the I've got the authentic newt suit diver, the guy who actually did rescue the 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 bell from the Edmund Fitzgerald. They're all there. Along with the boat captain, it's just a hugely expensive day. And it's got to be cinematic and great and you know. Uh, um, and but I can't film anything underwater. And I've already filmed everything that's that's not an underwater, but minus a couple of shots. Um, and so we just had to wait. I don't remember what they did to fix it, but, um, the day turned into a 18 hour filming day. Oh, wow. Wow. Oh my God. <laughs> you're, you're into over, over time costs. And I believe that they're exponential. It's like, all right, well, everybody gets time and a half after 12 or after eight. And then after, after 12, it becomes double time. And, you know, if it, no, it's just starts exploding. Yeah. And um, I thought if the studio gets to me first, I may not work on the show anymore because of the cost of that day was enormous. And I believe, and I'm, this is the way I'm going to tell the story today because this is the best way I remember it. I believe I had called Chris when I knew that I had no control. The guy's not going in the water. Right. And say, suck it up you know where's your courage get you can't do that you know no. it's a life or death thing so you just have to wait and chris chris i remember something like this he says 
you just make that day great and I will protect you. And like, because they're going to come hard. The studio's yeah. going to come hard. And I got an 18 hour day. I got it all. And I didn't get any calls from the studio. And that would be a rip your head off. Right. Like you'll never work in Hollywood and being dramatic. Kind of a really bad phone call. Nothing, not a peep. Awesome. And so Chris, you know, protected me. Um, on the other side of the protection, I had to make sure that when I was shooting, people would go, oh my God. Yeah. And if were because he sees the dailies and he goes, these are lame. <laughs> and uh, you know. <laughs> And he maybe not protect me quite so much. Right. Um, um, I mean, I don't remember any gripping stories um, beyond that I was fascinated with the idea of the show, how the uh, the oil could jump. Yeah. Um, yeah. And um, and what does it really mean when that oil is in you? Well, that you've kind of been AI'd, I would say in modern terms, that somebody else is control of your thinking, but to do what, you know? Um, so the, 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 the open thinking at the end of that is like, okay, well, so the oil jumps around and it changes people's behavior and they don't seem to be nicer people after they get the oil, they seem to be not nicer. Yeah. Um, so what does that mean? And then the episode ends. Well, now right. what? We'll, we'll just play it. I, I, there's just so much. It. And, you know, Piper was obviously um, the name of one of Jillian's kids. So that was also cool. Yep. Yeah. Okay. yeah well, and that, that was, scene, yeah. that scene, that underwater scene where they reveal that wing, that's a standout, oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. standout yeah. scene. So, you know, yeah, it was absolutely fantastic. And, and so it, it, every time we watch the show, I watch the show, it's like, what are they going to come up with next? What are they going to do next? That's just going to blow our damn freaking mind. You know, it was always something. And I just did the buildup was just, that was a part of it too. Yeah. 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 Well, look, when we got the scripts, um, we, we had the exact same reaction of, you know, wow, we've made some really great, interesting stories this season. What are they going to come up with next? And they would come up with something like completely unrelated. Like, how are they, but, but that's okay. It's inspiring to everybody, right. you know, and not to repeat yourself, try to um, refresh yourself creatively, just like the writers are doing. Um, so it was, that, that was inspiring. Uh, it's certainly to me. And I know to a lot of people down below, like, God, did you see the new script? It's from left field. Like what this is. And it's so thoughtful and complete and yeah, great times. I going to go on and say that forever. You know, and, and, and Piper Maru, you know, like the, the you were talking about with uh, Krychek, you know, I mean, I'm going to tell you right now, Krychek, he was my total favorite character, total, because <laughs> he, he was such a dirty bastard, but he was so cool at the same time, yeah. you know, and it was like at the time when I was watching the episode and the black oil, I was like, they better not kill him off. I was <laughs> I need to be pissed. You yeah, know? Hey, well, well, I'm a big fan of Nick's too. Um, and um, I hope Nick finds out about this. I hope he can hear you say that because that would mean a lot to him because he did do a great job and he yeah. was very unique and he was very aware of what his character's territory was right and how he didn't want to blend you could hear when he would reach out to Mulder's character either honestly or dishonestly yep and you always wondered is this a genuine um extension from Krychek or is he basically setting Mulder up you didn't know but right. I thought it was, was brilliant in the way he protected his borders you know from from bleeding into any of the uh, other characters um, and that his 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 character's zip code was very specific. Yeah, right. Um, no matter where you put him, he knew where he stood with with um, uh, cigarette smoking man, with Mulder, with Scully. He knew, and he could morph like a chameleon into ally, um, and then just on a dime turn into enemy and betray. Um, and the narcissism was off the charts. The cry check was like the most narcissist. Not Nick. Uh, cry check. Yeah. Cry check. Uh, yeah. So I'm, I'm yeah, I'm a great character. 
you know, yeah. I mean, Nick, you know, Nick, he just does not get enough credit, you know? Oh, I know. I, I agree. I don't know. I was, I, I mean, he's a great guy. We actually did get to meet him at Icon. Yeah. Up until we met him, I really wanted to just like punch him, you know, because he was such an evil guy on the show. But then, oh, he's a sweetheart. But then you meet him in person and. Yeah, he's the, just like, the nicest guy. He's yeah. so nice. You know? Yeah. Yep. Yep. That was a great. That was a great day when we got to finally meet yeah. some of those people. Yeah, you know, but uh, when when the when remember the X File Expo? Do you remember that in Virginia? No, uh, it was it was uh, Virginia. They did it in like four or five different states. Major. Cities. It was a major the Expo. Well, was I, I, I didn't do I didn't do all of them. But what I remember. I might I might have done more than I remember, but the one I remember was in the underground skip bombing uh, uh, hall under a park in Virginia, where they would where they 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 built it to test the the dam buster bombs right skip bombing, and it was like it was like the Staples Center underground. It was massive, and there was fourteen hundred fourteen hundred at least fourteen hundred people there. Um, uh my signature to this day is what it is as a result of that day uh, uh, because i signed 1400 autographs and when i started and they put down like cases of sharpies I'm like what is all that for uh, a sharpie goes oh you're gonna need them i go i don't need all those i didn't know i didn't yeah. know <laughs> and uh, they were lined up from here to next year. Yeah. And, um, I what I and they said, look, don't ask, don't talk to them, don't ask them what their name is. Just sign your name. And uh, you know, these people had paid to go there. They were fans of the show. They took time to come see us. I can't treat them like I'm branding cattle. I can't do that. Right. So, um, but if you talk to them. It's gonna. It's not gonna take two hours. It's gonna take a zillion hours. Yep. But I and I I knew that. Like, how long do I want to sit here? How many sharpies do I want to go through? But when it came down to it, I said, I'm only here for this. And these people clearly are so affectionate and grateful. So I asked them their names. <laughs> What's your name? How do you spell it? The spell it out. The the handlers were like, "Don't do that." I'm like, "Get get away!" I'm just. I'm. It's not right to just rob Bowman. Like, I am so freaking special that just having my name, that's not okay. It needs to say to Betty from Rob Bowman. Right. So it's for her, you know, or him, and yeah. and uh, and my hand got so cramped. Oh no. <laughs> that I couldn't make the O of my first name. So, but I could dot the O I could punch my hand at it and I don't and so my the reason my name is like weird looking R dot B and then Bo like that is because of that day it, I signed my name I did it so many times I changed my signature that's crazy I didn't change my signature oh today I'm going to change my signature no it just happened um but yeah I mean you come out on stage and there's you know, we don't see that, you know, we, we, we just deliver it to the network and they broadcast it and we don't see all those people. And then you show up to an expo and there's 1400 people, why would it might have been more? Right. Um, and this is an expensive show to put on. Right. So um, you you really do get bathed in um, the how much the fans appreciate the show in moments like that. And so it's, it's definitely overwhelming. Oh yeah, it's you know with the fans more than more than you can ever imagine. You know, I mean, you always you always you always hear about like you know this book. It's you it changed my life, or you know this spiritual person changed my life. Yeah. You know, yeah. the the show me personally, it it changed my life for the better. Yeah. You know, that's fascinating, interesting. You know, um, this show is so huge that. I'm going to say something to you that you might not know. I don't have the blueprints here with me, but did you know they were going to be building an X-Files theme park in Dubai? No. We have the um, we have the original presentation. The, arch the, the, arch architect. the architect 
uh, blueprints. We have oh, two different awesome. versions. They were going to build just this elaborate amusement th park in Dubai, and it focused on different episodes of the show. Oh, wow. You know, you had little hotels in there. You had little amusement rides and stuff. Yeah, it's it's. When I tracked those blueprints down, I had no clue. And then it was like, wow, imagine if this came reality. It would be amazing. Wow. I'll have to send you the pictures. Yeah. I'll email them to you so you can see them. No clue that was ever a plan. It's crazy. Yeah. I wish. Yeah. Disney World can, uh, you know, spend some money and build it for me. <laughs> <laughs> if they build it. They will come. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. You know. Yeah, well, I think I, you know, I, I mean, I could talk all night, but you know, I think I've. I'll here. say I, I'd asked Chris recently, um, fairly recently. I mean, I'll say recent, um, about more. Yes, more. And he said, "Can't make more until something real happens." but that we had drained the tank on speculation and that the audience didn't want it anymore. So I keep hearing, I, want that, it. I keep, I know, well, us, yes, we do. Um, uh, I keep hearing that there might be some disclosures coming soon, some D class coming soon. Um, so um, I don't know, um, but maybe if something interesting happens, in the real world, um, the singular word is proof. Right. Right. Uh, then, then who knows what what'll happen? Who knows what'll happen? I was. That's funny that you say that because I was just going to say to you if they decided to do another movie, would Mr. Rob, Rob Bowman be on board? Oh yeah. Awesome. Oh that's yeah. That's good to hear. Um, I, I, will Chris be on board? Well, I don't know. It's I, I don't get to invite myself to those things. I can put yeah. myself, I can put my name in the hat, and then they they can choose. But um, it's so funny uh, you asked that because I'm in the middle of uh, I'm a heavy duty movie we watch. I just watched everything that Hitchcock made that I can find, beginning with The Log, which is 1924. I watched all the black and white Hitchcocks first, and then I started leaking into the color because I've watched all the color ones so many times. But um, and then I decided to stay in um, in all the all the films I watched, you know, when I was nineteen or twenty years old to like figure out what to do, um, which was a lot of movies. And so I'm literally in the I'm halfway through Ridley Scott's Alien. And um, and and now can, I can really dissect it for for what a great accomplishment that movie was, but also how to deliver um, psychologically off camera the threat and as little only what you absolutely need of seeing that thing to deliver um, the jump scares because that's a jump scare movie. Right. So like yeah. The Shining. There's no jump scares in The Shining, right? No. The the jump scare area is when Shelley Duvall sees what Jack Nicholson's actually been typing the whole time. Right. But that's a pretty low octane moment. It's more of a it's more of a disgusting reveal, a a a a a, a reversal that's more intellectual initially because you read the line and then you go wait a minute he he wrote the same line over and over and over for all these days oh now i think i'm getting a sick to my stomach that's not a jump scare nope <laughs> no definitely Alien has jump scares in it yeah. right and there's even a scene when they go back into the medical uh room um because the little the little barman is escaped and um, we're on a low wide shot looking at Sigourney and uh, um, uh, one of the other characters, um, Tom Skerritt, he has just left a camera left. And it's all like, you know, oh shit, with these little tiny flashlights, little like dot, like you're not gonna see anything with a fucking flashlight, <laughs> flashlight. going around like this, it's like a probe. 
and she's alone in this wide frame and literally a like a steel box is thrown down it's probably fucking ridley off camera left and he just <laughs> throws this box down on the floor just bang like that you know when it's dead quiet it wasn't the monster it wasn't even the cat yeah it was, and jumped out of your seat at what yeah. a box drop on the floor yeah so so he knew that this is a jump scare movie and then we'll we'll fill the time in between the jump scares with a simmering awareness we're all in this little ship well, it's not little but we're all in this thing together yeah. there's no running down the street to the neighbor's house so where is it Right. And um, just the craftsmanship, how he did it, how the story is told, what's the art direction. So, you know, you know, after decades of doing this, I'm still as goofy about movies and how they're told. Um, I was watching North by Northwest the other day and I was talking to a writer buddy about how much I love how much time they take. I mean, I don't know how many scenes are in that movie where he says, I'm not that they all they give him the wrong name, Kaplan like Kaplan, I think. He's like, I'm not George Kaplan. Why do you all think I'm George Kaplan? And then we have other scenes where there's so many other people who all think he's the wrong guy. Like, how do you all think that I'm this guy? I'm not that guy. I'm Roger Thornhill. That's the right name. And like what like what is this? Like, how did this like bad information get out there? It, it's scene after scene after scene. You could do that in one or two scenes now. And then once he meets even even Marie Saint on the train, I didn't time it, but it felt like an eight minute scene where, and she's wearing the pants in that scene. It was really funny to watch. Um, eight minute scene to have them talk and and start to develop that relationship um, and, and start to layer it. And, and she's basically saying, hey, we're on a, <clears throat> a long uh, train ride to Chicago. I'm alone, you're alone. You're coming to my cabin tonight for sugar. I said, <laughs> what? What? And that's a woman. Yeah. And, and and pining to my friend, like, I wish we could take that long now to develop stories before we get going. And he says, he says, why can't you? I said, well, you know, today with instant gratification. And he goes, just make a good movie. They'll watch it. So I was like, yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna short circuit it because I feel like an audience who's been brainwashed into um, immediate gratification can't enjoy I mean how many people on YouTube are listening to cashmere who've never heard it before and they're blown away you know a big loud slow song it's a very dramatic song um, and but they get it and it's like they've never like what is this I go it's just great songwriting and then great musicianship so and if all these kids on YouTube blown away oh my god i've never heard a man sing like that or jimmy page or john bonham you know oh my god i go okay so great art sustains right yeah. so maybe we can so that that's the long-winded answer of saying if something happens it'll probably be terrifying um, yeah. <laughs> that, that chris needs to get him to uh want to hang out with me which I ask so many questions. It, I, I torture the shit out of that guy. He may not. He, he actually may not hire me because he may just want to write it and say, "Just go make it and don't bother me." That's not me. Okay. When the second line, when she says this, why does she need to say that? Oh my God, really? Yes. Why does she say it um, for 120 pages? Um, but uh, yeah, I, I would be uh, fascinated, thrilled. Um, and I'm still boyish. I'm still childish in my enthusiasm to do it. So yeah, awesome. um, I do have one thing, which is pretty underwhelming now after all the stuff you have, oh boy. but I went into my basement because I have, I think I have every script I directed. Um, I have almost every script I've directed for my entire career. Wow. Um, almost, but, um, I was going to pull out. I was going to search for a script that um, had my drawings in it. And maybe if we do another one, I'll, I'll go down into the dungeon and because yeah. I've got boxes and boxes of yeah. fire. And I had one box, I was looking for X files and it said X files press in Japan. I go, okay, I'm not opening that. Um, um, where it's, I just need, which box just says the X files. I don't know what's in it. 
Um, uh, so we'll see. But I did find this. All right. Oh, boy. I love when he shows us things. Yeah. Oh, boy. Okay, I'll tell us. Oh, oh, no, no. oh my God. <laughs> That's a girl. Oh, my God. Okay, Lord. so this is my first Los Angeles episode written by Vince Gilligan. Yeah. Um, this was my first time working with Bill Rowe. And um, I guess we got on pretty good because Bill Rowe, um, the fun part about working with Bill Rowe is he was already um, quite bold, brave, and, uh, uh, and pretty fearless before I met him. And so I remember he said, okay, you know, cause I've been doing it for a while. He goes, how do we like this show? And once he got that we like with our gut, and we light with our eye and, and essentially don't use a meter. If it looks good to your eye, just shoot it. And um, I'm not saying he didn't use a meter because he's not stupid, um, but um, he got it instantly. And it was fun and it was liberating for him because it was non-theatrical, there was non, certainly not cosmetic. It was nothing like he'd done before, or at least he didn't tell me that, that this was like, if it looks, if it looks cool and if it's within the moment of the story, then it's lit correctly. Right. Right. And it's got to look insane. And it was like, well, that just sounds like fun. I said, it is fun. Watch. I've been doing this for years. Let's go. So uh, I guess somebody else, somebody else agreed because on the bottom right, it says that he won the ASC award for best cinematography. Wow, wow. that's beautiful. On our first adventure. So I, I know he had a good time with me making Drive, but when he won the ASC award, he goes, okay, I just trust this knucklehead. No matter what he says, I'm just gonna trust this knucklehead. That would be me. Yeah. Um, and then we, he won another one um, for Aguamala, wow. which was the right the hurricane in Florida, and all the lights are out. Yeah, we like and, that. And we were we were tuned up. Bill and I were tuned up so well that um, I had the idea that aside from exhibiting the time of day exterior. And as you remember, if you do, that most of that episode's inside this apartment. Mm -hmm. That I said, I don't know why anything is lit with other than actual lanterns or or battery driven emergency lights. There should be no other light in there because there wouldn't be any other light in there. Right. right. So, okay. so we need a boatload of lanterns. We need a boatload of emergency lights, you know, the doubles in the hallways and whatnot. And we need our flashlights. And that's all we're lighting. With. <laughs> And so when you say there's no other lights allowed on set except that, you're not going to do that 100% because sometimes you need some other light. But to know that, okay, this is a moment we're going to need to put up an 18K, otherwise it won't work. Then you put up that one 18K, but you don't still empty the truck in the morning. And until all the equipment that was on the truck is being used, then you're ready to light. There are DPs who do that. I got to use all the lights I'm renting, but otherwise the UPM is going to wonder why I'm renting all these lights that didn't happen and um but i didn't know that i had this so i've got you know to me um my vince my first vince gilligan experience no not my first i had i had the, i did pusher and whatnot up in vancouver for him but um another one of these amazing things that vince came up with wow that's amazing um, and my first los angeles experience and my first time working with bill resulted in him getting an asc award so um that was a little <laughs> and no, I'm not giving it to you. <laughs> Poor Jay. It's going to be okay. Oh, man. <laughs> that wasn't underwhelming at all. Okay. All right. Uh, Wait a minute. I have something that you don't have? I know. What, I understand. what is going on here? One question we forgot to ask. Yeah. Was there ever a script or an idea that you wished that for some reason you couldn't make, but you wish you could have? Oh. 
whether it be the studio said no or whatever it was? Um, the studio was too busy counting the profits. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't see if we'd have knocked on the door and say, hey, we want to make a weird episode. They're like, go it away. Hang on, start back. One, two. <laughs> um, we're no, counting, no. we're counting. We're counting. Um, It may, it might have been, it might have been, and you know, everything was so big, or at least most everything that they had me do was so big. Um, it, it, it was so aspirational and an appetite and, 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 and money. Um, I was, I'm an expensive director. <laughs> um, but you know, if I shoot the good, if I shoot good stuff, I'll be allowed to continue to be an expensive. The only reason you can be expensive is if, if they have they're liking what you do. So is there, there's a definitely a um, back and forth there. But um, maybe I got an itch during the show that I thought we could do really powerful small. And there was a movie, uh, Peter O'Toole. Um, and he is a British aristocrat who was sent to kill Hitler. Oh. And it was a true story. Um, I don't, it, it was a true story that the, the British sent somebody to kill Hitler and like infiltrate or something like that. I don't know if the, I don't know if the arrest of it was, it's been too long. Um, but um, the story begins with, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Peter O'Toole screaming uh, MOS silent uh, because they're ripping out his fingernails. Ow. Oh off camera yeah because uh, he's been caught by the by the nazis and and then it's all about his escape using the underground and french resistance and then you know being in a bar yeah. a safe bar and the nazis come in and then how's he getting there between him and the door how's he gonna get out of here and he gets out um, um and it was something about the title was something about he basically ends up in a underground whole cave you know he's gone to ground yeah. and um it was so and there was so much tension and i i believe it's for bbc television i don't think it was a feature i don't know what what it's original maybe it did go into the but small um and so it was a Mulder <laughs> story or scully story um they go way in behind enemy, enemy lines to do the right thing um and then they get caught or found out and now they got to get out and i kept asking frank to do this and i sent him the movie and we never made it um you know it it was more of a internal movie like where Mulder or scully feels that at any moment and certainly when you think you're amongst friends or allies one of them could be on the dole from the nazi party right. and reveal you or kill you so you don't know who to trust, but you've got to get out um, because if you don't get out, they are going to kill you and it's going to be slow beginning with fingernails. Um, so ugly, horrible, violent death um, awaits at every turn. And that's alive and simmering through the whole story. Um, and uh, I guess I chose the wrong movie to send to Frank because they never made it. <laughs> But you know, I'm not. I, I'm not walking. I'm not looking back on that show. Geez, thinking, gee, I wish we'd have really stepped it up and reached for the stars because we did. Oh, you did. Oh yeah, you did a lot. And uh, I also loved um, after I'd earned his trust that I, Chris would just like just go make it. Um, yep. So you get the you get the joy of creative freedom, but you better deliver those dailies every single day. And so. What I wanted was to be left alone. What Chris wanted was a great show. So the, the silent detente was, I will leave you alone if I get my dailies. And so every day was, I wanted my freedom. I wanted my creative freedom. So I had to tell those stories, his stories, their stories as best I could so that they were like, God, did you see the dailies? You know, it's going to be a great one. You know, Rob's on top of it. And then I had my creative freedom, which is what was really important to me. Um, and he trusted me. And and um, 
And when he didn't trust me or if I pissed him off, I guarantee I knew about it right away. <laughs> <laughs> That's the side of Chris I can't imagine. Oh, I'm sure it's um, there. He, he demands artistry. He demands <laughs> creative courage. And he demands it every single day. And you would only hope that if for some reason you didn't hit the mark one day, he was busy doing something else. <laughs> and he didn't have time to call me and chew on me. So you just hope that your average was so high that if something, I did something someday or I had a bad day or whatever, he would go, not happy, but um, maybe something else caused him to, for this day, not to be so great or I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna use one of my rip Rob's head off tickets on this day. Yeah. So, but, um, but I think he knew that every day meant everything to me. Right. And I, and I know he knew that I loved to be left alone. I know he knows that. Um, and he knew I valued that. And he knew that I had to pay for that. I had to earn it. So, um, yeah, I don't, I'm, I'm not like, Oh, we left something. We left something. I don't remember. Outside of that one story I just told you, I don't have any, gee, I wish we would have done this instead of that. I wish we had more prep on the movie. I wish I could have used the Vancouver crew. Yeah. Uh, right. You know, I, I, wish, I wish some other things, but, um, you know, it was what it was. I was just grateful to be there. Right. Well, I know there's no way every script could, I mean, you only have so many episodes a season, so some things had to not get made. Right. So yeah. just my curiosity was, you know, what other little gems did we miss out on? Because, uh, I, you know, that that's Chris or Frank, or, you know, that's one of those guys. You got to ask them. I don't know. Um, yeah. I don't, I don't, but I don't remember. Either. All right. Yeah. Well, I think we're done for uh, today. Yep. I will send you pictures of those blueprints so you yep. can check them out. Yes, please. Absolutely. Yes, please. And if and I'm dying to get any more information on those. So if you uh right once you see them, if you can think of anybody that might know some. About the Dubai theme park. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're it's the a, first who's ever said it. Nobody's coming to me like, did you hear about it? <laughs> yeah. I don't it's, know. it's wait till you see them and then okay. and then yeah i mean and uh, what when you do see them the the detail and just i mean uh, they give you all the episodes and the air dates you know um uh, gaming rooms um little Amazing. places you could like rest and sleep you know yeah. and every little area is named after like an episode or something yeah that's so cool that's so cool uh okay well i'm sure we'll do this again we, we're still scratching the surface so yeah definitely and i i will take time to go into the dungeon and find uh, oh we'd love to see one of your... yeah. yeah 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 definitely okay. all, right. all right have a great right. day thank, thank, you. thank you thank you all right see you bye yep bye